this is the last part of our simple Keynesian multiplier series. So until now, if you remember that the whatever uh, you know multiplier we have already discussed, be it government expenditure multiplier or tax multiplier or whatever, we made an uh, we made a simplifying assumption that T is basically tax was basically lump sum tax that is t was equal to t bar okay so now we are going to relax that assumption we are going to change that assumption we want to introduce we uh, in this uh, lecture i am going to introduce a more general you know tax function where t will be assumed to be a function of income increasing function of income that means t prime greater than zero okay if income increases tax also increases okay and then we are going to see how that's going to change our multiplier the size of the multiplier whether this has got any effect on the size of the multiplier okay so let's move on see how it's going to affect our our model our model in a sense that how it's going to affect the process of multiplier particularly the size of the multiplier okay so if you recall the equilibrium condition then the equilibrium condition was y was equal to c as a function of disposable income plus investment which was exogenously given plus government expenditure which was exogenously given and yd was equal to y minus t but instead of t equal to t bar now what we are assuming is t as a function of y with t prime greater than zero but less than one means as income increases tax liability also increases okay so so if your income is 100 rupees then maybe if t prime is equal to say 0.2 then you have to pay 20 percent of your income as tax that is your tax liability would be 20 rupees and if your income increases to say 200 rupees then with t prime at 0.2 you'll have to pay 40 rupees out of your 20 rupees so earlier we assumed that if your income is 100 you were paying a constant amount say 20 rupees if your income increases to 200 rupees still you were paying 20 rupees whatever whatever be your income I mean, if it is 1000 rupees your tax liability was 20 rupees so the tax function was was like a horizontal line like this that was like a horizontal line like this but now it's a upward rising upward rising line it should be like this it should be like maybe like you know you can if you want to draw the tax function then you can draw like this and draw like this i mean with a slope of 0.2 with a slope of actually point t prime if it is 0.2 then then you know it is uh it's like slope is like 0.2 so so i'm erasing that for the moment for a moment okay now how is it going to affect our equilibrium condition and then multiply see actually it's not going to affect our equilibrium diagram as such only thing is because remember g bar is given like as it was earlier i bar was exogenously given so this is this is just like as it was earlier consumption function is a function of disposable income only thing is this disposable income only thing is this disposable income yd is basically that has changed so instead of yd equal to y minus t bar we are now assuming yd that is equal to y minus t which is again a function of income so basically that's going to change the slope of this line okay so so but but the, but but essentially it's going to be like just like an upward rising function with a positive intercept here maybe earlier the slope was you know if little you know steeper 
like maybe so it was like this and now it's a little flatter that means what that means with an increase in income your consumption is increasing by a lesser amount so that's the difference that's only the difference so instead of so let's clear them so the only difference is the slope of this otherwise they are all the same just like before so this is this is our consumption function then your aggregate demand is exactly equal to c as a function uh, ad is equal to c uh, which is a function of disposable income plus investment plus government expenditure then this is the equilibrium where your aggregate demand line cuts to 45 degree line and if you if you draw the saving investment diagram it's exactly the same the only difference as you can see is it was s as a function of y minus t bar instead of plus t bar because tax was equal to t bar instead of that we are now writing s as a function of y minus t y so t is now a function of income and here also t is a function of income again the only difference is the slope of this will change i mean if you compare this with our earlier model then the slopes are different otherwise the logic and how the equilibrium is determined here is exactly the same so so we are we're not interested in them the only thing we are interested in is is the fact that when we introduce this this tax function into our model how is it going to change the calculation of multiplier how is it going to affect the multiplier mechanism is there any effect or or just like just like as you can see there is no effect on the on the equilibrium condition as such so so how is it going to affect the multiplier mechanism so we will uh, we we'll, we will do that just using simple mathematics so let's do that okay again the same diagram no change only change is this only change is the definition of yt here yt here okay so the way it works was exactly the same as i told you the only difference is this slope of this line therefore slope of this line and the saving investment diagram also just instead of writing s equal to s y minus t bar we are just now we are writing s equal to s y minus t y plus t y instead of t bar the mechanism is the same but as you will see this because the slope has changed this multiplier the effect of the multiplier is actually different from our earlier model and that we are going to do because this is an extension only you can do that using uh, you know using the graph just like this i mean maybe earlier your saving function was like this Sorry, sorry, sorry. Saving function is going to be more flat. So earlier it was like this. Now, now it's like the new one is like this. As I told you, the only difference is when we assume t as a function of t was t bar. So that time maybe the saving function was like this. So if this is the initial equilibrium then actually the multiplier was bigger because earlier the income was supposed to increase up to this point but now because of the introduction of this tax function here the multiplier has reduced now the income is increasing up to this okay but this is not clear until now why this is happening we will explain this why the multiplier value of the multiplier is falling we will explain this using simple mathematics and logic also here we are here we are uh, you know assuming that c prime as earlier was 0.8 80% of your disposable income you are going to consume and t prime is 0.2 that means whatever be your income you have to pay 20% of that to the government 0.2 means 20% this 0.2 is basically t prime 
so if your income is 100 rupees you are going to pay 20 rupees if your income is you know 200 rupees you are going to pay 40 rupees and so on like that now the way we you know calculated how the effect of an increase in say government expenditure by 100 rupees will be just like before just just spot the difference what is going to happen here is initially because government expenditure has increased by 100 rupees this is the direct effect initially aggregate demand will increase by 100 rupees and therefore income will increase by 100 rupees but as income increases by 100 rupees earlier in our earlier model what was happening is that out of that 100 rupees the consumers were consuming 80 rupees 80 percent of 100 that is 80 rupees so the first round was 80 rupees consumption increase and therefore aggregate demand increase was 80 rupees but now you will have to pay 20 rupees from that 100 rupees first to the government and this remaining 80 rupees is your increase in disposable income and you will inca you will increase your consumption by actually 80 percent of that 80 rupees so what we are writing is is 1 minus 0 0.02 that means 100 this 100 minus 0.2 of 100 so this is basically tax 0 0.2 0 0.2 is your tax component so 1 minus 0.2 is your disposable income this is your disposable income this part is actually your disposable income and you are consuming 80 percent of that so so this is the induced consumption in that round and that will go on because if income increases by this amount in this round then the next round what will happen whatever income increased in the previous round that is this one within second bracket this part 1 minus 0 0.02 will go to the government as tax and the remaining part you will consume okay so this is how it works and then in the third round whatever income increased in the second round that is this part that part is coming here within the second bracket okay that part is actually coming here and then out of that you are paying 20 percent as tax and that part out of that part you are consuming 80 percent so this is how it works so if you compare this with our earlier model this this item this term 1 minus 0 0.02 was not there it was absent there this 1 minus 0 0.02 was not there because there was no there was tax but tax was not a function of income so therefore when income was increasing no there was no increase in tax there was no increase in tax because the, the assumption was lump sum tax okay so if you if you simplify these things then you can write it 100 plus this just just simplify you will you will find this and then you take out 100 then it will be 1 plus 0.8 into 1 minus 0.02 plus 0.8 into 1 minus 0 0.02 square plus 0 0.8 into 1 minus 0 0.02 cube like that so in our in our in our earlier model where tax was lump sum this was not there this this was absent this part was absent because there was no tax because there was no tax this 0.2 was the, was absent so but now because we have tax so we remove this so we remove this it will be there okay now you simplify it further so this is like 1 plus r plus r square plus r cube just like before but now r is this the whole of it okay so therefore the formula is 1 by 1 minus r therefore this is 1 by 1 minus r is basically this this part is r okay 0.8 into 0.1 minus 0 so then if you just uh, use the notation this is c prime this is t prime so in terms of notation you can write the multiplier as or the change in income delta y will be equal to delta g all into 1 by 1 minus c prime into 1 minus t prime so this is the multiplier 
this part is your multiplier government expenditure multiplier or autonomous expenditure multiplier whatever you want to say if you calculate this in this case i mean assuming c prime equal to 0.8 and t prime equal to 0.2 it's coming out at around 2.8 so income is increasing by 280 rupees if you recall our previous model the multiplier value was 5 okay now the multiplier is significantly smaller so now as i was telling you in the previous slide that the multiplier value actually is lower when tax is assumed to be a function of income let me explain why this is happening now see why this is happening this is happening because of this region this this is happening because of this reason the reason is earlier there was no leakage earlier when the direct effect that when the direct effect was there income increased by 100 rupees and so 80 percent of that income was going to consumption that is 100 rupees out of out of 100 rupees 80 rupees were going was going directly to the consumption but now there is a leakage of 20 rupees the government is actually taking 20 rupees out of that increased income of 100 rupees and so there is a leakage so consumption is basically increasing by 80 percent of 80 rupees that means it's basically increasing by 64 rupees so if this is increasing by 64 rupees this is lower than 80 rupees so if this is true for one round then it is true for all the rounds subsequent rounds so basically due to this additional leakage in terms of a tax the value of the multiplier is smaller okay so we can write this the formula we can write the multiplier formula like this so instead of 1 by 1 minus c prime earlier it was 1 by 1 minus c prime now it is 1 by 1 minus c prime pull into 1 minus t prime so this additional term is there this additional term is there because of the fact that there is a t prime now earlier actually there was no t prime t prime was equal to 0 if you put t prime equal to 0 here you will find this for t prime equal to 0 the multiplier is just the value we we actually derived in our earlier model in our previous model in our uh, in our model where tax was uh, tax was uh, lump sum and this is this is this is true for all the models this is actually autonomous expenditure multiplier because remember i told you it is not relevant whether you are increasing g or increasing i or whatever any increase in any autonomous expenditure component will have the same result so what is the result the result is basically okay before that let's i mean uh, let's uh, derive it uh, just using mathematical expression this is the equilibrium condition okay so just just we have changed this one instead of t bar we are now writing t as a function of income so if you uh, if you go to the second step then dy will be equal to c prime dy and here you have t as a function of income therefore it is t prime dy okay del t del y into dy is here so, and plus the rest is the same so instead of instead of only dy and c prime dy you now have c prime dy minus c prime dy you are bringing this to the left hand side you are bringing this to the left hand side also that means c prime into t prime into dy that is equal to di bar plus dg bar and then you can just handle things to write this way 1 minus c prime into 1 minus t prime into dy equal to di bar plus dg bar if i if you are interested to find out government expenditure multiplier keep dg put di equal to 0 if you are interested to find out investment multiplier keep di bar put dg bar equal to 0 just like that so because we are talking about government expenditure multiplier so let's put di bar equal to 0 here and then this gives 1 minus c prime into 1 minus t prime dy this is equal to dg bar and therefore dy 
is equal to 1 by 1 minus c prime into 1 minus t prime. So this is the multiplier. This is the multiplier in a model, in a simple Keynesian model, where we are assuming tax as a function of income. So this is how you derive multiplier using simple mathematics. Okay. Now you compare the. I mean, I have already discussed this actually. So if you. So basically, uh, if you now compare the multiplier in this model where tax is a function of income and where tax was lump sum, if you compare them, you can clearly see that the multiplier now is less than size, less than in size than the multiplier when tax was lump sum because T prime is less than one. But remember, if this is less than one, then basically this portion is also less than one, then you are actually multiplying a fraction with a fraction in the denominator and that too after a negative sign so that is going to reduce your size of the multiplier so i have already explained why the size of the multiplier is actually less in this model than the than the earlier models where tax was actually uh, a lump sum one t was equal to t bar so this is as i have already explained that this this is basically due to an additional you know leakage term because some part of the income is actually going to the government in each stage and therefore the induced effect that means the effect through increase in consumption that effect is basically weakening and therefore the multiplier the value of the multiplier is less than when the tax was a lump sum so here actually we are uh, uh, we uh, end our discussion on 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 this this extension. We have another you know interesting extension to 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 discuss, and that's that's interesting because just remember, just just keep the uh, just try to uh, keep uh, you know things simple, and uh, say this is the investment function. This is this is investment autonomously given you can keep i bar plus g bar here as well with comment without comment model i mean whatever you want to do so this is not important for us and that's the initial saving function say just remember the okay you can keep t bar also here just remember the uh, the discussion on equilibrium so this was the equilibrium point this is actually e is actually here okay not here so equilibrium income is at y e. What will happen if people started saving more? If the desire to save increases, okay? So people actually now saving more than before. So clearly the saving function will shift leftward, okay, like this, like this, upward, and income will fall. Income will fall from y e to y e 1 okay but remember if you compare this e equilibrium saving and investment was at i 0 and s 0 e so they were equal because this is the equilibrium condition and at e 1 also income is falling but equilibrium income and saving they are at their initial level e okay nothing is changing only income is falling why income is falling is 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 very clear because an increasing when when people are saving more that means they are consuming less right increase in s is basically means increase in s is basically means decrease in consumption if c falls that means aggregate demand falls so there is no confusion here if aggregate demand falls then why you also should fall because because the Keynesian logic okay because income is determined by aggregate demand so if income if aggregate demand falls then why should fall so you are getting a result which is on the expected line but then why we are uh, introducing this here at the end of our discussion this is because if we change one assumption a little bit here then we are going to get up get an interesting result so say 
instead of assuming investment as autonomously given let's let's relax this assumption okay so let's go to the next slide here as you can see investment is not autonomously given now we are using an investment line like this this is an increasing function of income it's it's, an, it's upward rising line like this okay like like this like this it's upward rising function i is a function of income with i prime greater than zero what is the meaning of that this means that income if income increases then investment in the economy will increase okay that's one this is actually actually in reality investment is not autonomously given this is not autonomously given as i told you that we are assuming this to to keep things i mean to make things simple so this is why the model is called simple keynesian model we are we are only studying the simplest version of the keynesian keynesian model but investment in general in in, in reality investment can be a function of rate of interest it can be a function of income and so many things okay so but in this model we kept it simple that's why we have assumed that investment is actually autonomously given but if you relax that assumption and introduce this assumption that 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 investment is actually a positive function of income then what is going to happen see here this is the investment line okay and this is the initial saving function so equilibrium is here remember for stability we need an investment function which is flatter than the saving function because because if you remember the the you know condition for stability in simple keynes and equilibrium then you will be able to understand why this is required for stability okay so 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 say we are here so we are here this is the investment function this is the investment function and this is the initial saving line so you are here at point e and your equilibrium income is at point y e and as you can see the initial level of equilibrium investment and saving because investment is equal to saving in equilibrium so they are at i0 and s0 level now we are doing the same comparative statics that is an increase in desire to save just like before just like the, the earlier slide so if you do that if people started saving more people became more thrifty t h r i f t y means more thrifty means they are now trying to save more they are more thrifty now okay so what will happen the saving function will shift upward to the left left direction like this so the new equilibrium is here just like before one thing is clear one thing is there will be a fall in income just like before but there is a very surprising result of fall in investment and saving the new equilibrium is showing you an investment and saving at s1 where s0 is actually greater than s1 that means what is happening here is basically due to an increase in people's desire to save the equilibrium saving of the economy is actually falling this is a paradoxical result why people are trying to save more so their their desire people's desire to save has increased the thriftiness has increased but at the end of all what we are getting is basically total savings of the economy has fallen so this is this is just contrary to what you would expect because people are trying to save more but total savings is falling this is why this is called paradox of thrift this idea is called paradox of thrift this is a paradox apparently a paradox 
I mean, we can explain this, but this is basically the statement is an increase in desire to save reduces equilibrium saving in the economy. People are trying to save more, but that is basically that is basically reducing the equilibrium income in the economy. So that is that is a paradox which is called paradox of thrift. Now let me explain why this is happening. Why 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 this is so? I mean why why this is happening? This is happening because because of this this investment function. This is happening because of this investment function. That means when actually what is happening here because investment is a function of income when there is a fall in aggregate demand due to this increase in savings and therefore there is a fall in income so investment because this is a function of income investment is falling okay and as investment is falling because in the new equilibrium you need investment equal to saving therefore saving is also falling this is how you can explain paradox of trip in a simple way okay so this is this is what we say paradox of trip. this is this is this this fall in income is not you know unexpected this is this we know why this is happening because because people are saving more therefore people are consuming less and therefore aggregate demand is falling and income is falling apparently what is perplexing or what is paradoxical is that due to that total savings of the economy is also falling 